Then don't worry what to do. You gonna blaze. Finish up a little food in the afternoon. Broadcasting live, baby. We on the road. We doing it, bit. The number one show here in Sim World. It is Blaze and Takes. Of course, I'm Rick Blaze and my co-host, as always. See, brother, how we doing? Doing great. Beautiful Tuesday. Excited to be in the studio. Let's get to it. Man. Let's jump right on in. We had some basketball on, on the front today. I'm excited to announce we had some basketball. We had basketball without borders. Uh, it's a several games that's going on throughout the duration of this week. Uh, today was the basketball without borders game with Africa. And I must say, Steve, there's some talent in Africa. Um, they play okay. a different brand of basketball. They play a different brand of basketball in Africa. They don't, ain't, ain't nobody shooting no threes. There's somebody coming here and driving to the paint and you will get your ass whooped. Do you not prepare? Because it's a physical game of basketball. What do you think about the game you saw today? I thought it was a good game. We saw a lot of competition. You know, it was hard fought. I'll tell you who I was really impressed by. Amira Ifua. Oh, yeah. A at the moment, um, you know, likely he's in the region with similar to Africa. That's kind of where he would be expected to land. But after a game like today, there might be some coaches each now trying to get him out of the region. I mean, he, he put up 20 points, nine boards. He was 8 for 13 from the field. He led the game in scoring and rebounding. Uh, yes. He looked, he looked dominant today. Uh, I really like what I saw from him. And, and then Cola, as we all know, Cola Abdura, he led his team to a victory. He had like 18, I think. I mean, he looked real nice, but we, we know about him. We know about him. Right. Uh, and, and, and here's the thing, crazy part. Amir played with Africa last season with Cola. He just wasn't utilized correctly. He was, they had Cola, they had Amir, they had DuPont, they had um, a a a Jay, well, the guy who left. They I had all those. Benle. Yep, yep. For Ben, they had all those guys. So if you if, if people go back and again, I keep my receipts. You can check. I remember saying in one of the Africa games last year, this Amir A M A R Amir guy, he's really efficient. Like he uh, he he'll he'll his stat line will be like six for nine, four for five, or five for seven. Like throughout the season, he wasn't getting a lot of attempts, but he was making work. And you know it's all season. He's a little like I haven't seen this part of his game, so he's obviously been working on this game. Uh, as far as so, I'm excited to see both of them now getting to do their thing. Uh, Cola is a is a pure point guard, and my man, he's built like a tank. I mean, he's as a former point guard position, he may Ethan let him in look really small. <laughs> yeah, that he did. That he did. And Ethan Letterman is a rank, he's a normal sized kid. Ethan Letterman's like what six one, maybe like one sixty. He's a regular size point guard size. He made him look really small. And I'm telling you guys now, I put it in the thread. How, two things. I've seen him hit a couple. I've seen him hit some threes. Cole is not a shooter. At least not last year he wasn't. So I was just been, my man's oh, working on the game. He said he's been working on his three point game. Hey. If that boy, if that boy can start hitting a few jumpers, he doesn't change. He's six five, one whatever, almost two hundred pounds. If he grows another three inches, you have Giannis all over again. That's you have crazy, a Giannis crazy. type player all over again with this kid. He can already handle the ball. He can already drive to the basket. He plays decent defense, I guess. But he's a big guy. That that's that's scary thought to think about what he could grow uh, into. But also, my man, uh, Conti was was nice, uh, especially on defense. I really like uh, Medella. Yeah, to the basket. Did. And when he goes to the basket, you just get, you get yammed on. Simple as that. And and that's, the thing. that's the thing. We did not see a lot of – we did not see a lot of success with similar to Africa last year, but there's a lot of talent there. And they just yeah. got a sophomore from Letterman. We know Cole is coming back. I that's believe. a good look. I mean, I mean, there are guys, you know, there's a world where maybe they can get Pont to come back. I know he said he wasn't closed off to the idea of returning. He just wanted to go home for a little while and, and feel out his options. There is very talented. Hey, man. They, they, if, they, if they, they, they could be the best international team, like, in the they, There's a the talent hey, there. If they get DuPont, and they had that with Cola, with Amer, and Ethan Letterman, and I'm gonna go one step further. Go ahead and get that that Mo guy, Mo, that uh, Jolly Mo, whatever his name is. Get him too. They they forget the best international team. They could be one of the best teams in the world too. If, if they're coached up right, if they're coached up right. Oh man, that's so that's so much. That's 
so if that's so yeah, important. That's, that's the big thing. That's the big that's thing. That's a huge thing. Speaking of coaching upright, uh, there's been some there's some changes going to take place in SimWorld uh, this upcoming season. Several of the changes we're going to roll out, but I'll just talk about one in particular. This upcoming season, instead of it being however many teams making the tournament, the race to one tournament, now every team, regardless of record, uh, is going to make the race to one tournament. So do you think this is good or bad for the league, please? I think it's exciting. I think it's exciting, but would I call it good? I don't know. Because here's the issues that come with that. It's how you keep the regular season exciting. You know, you're not battling to make it to the race to one. Like you're, you're just playing games for seeding, which can be really important, but it's so easy to lose sight of that. It's like, all right, we'll we'll turn it on. We'll get it together by then. And that that's great. It, it makes for more potential upsets for, you know, us and for fans to watch, right. things like that. It makes for you're going to see every player play, in, you know, under the big lights, and that's exciting. But it's going to take a special kind of coach to keep their players motivated through a season when they know they're going to make the race with guards. And I think that's yeah. kind of the big thing for me is like, yeah. are these regular season games like other than maybe the rivalry games where there's genuine kind of like this case between the two? Like, are they going to be exciting? Or are they going to just kind of run the mill, like, you know, everyone's playing, but we know we're going to make the race anyway. So I think that's kind of where my head's at with that. It's exciting once we get to race the one time, but how is it going to be during the regular? Yeah, and, and I'm going to give you my good, my bad, and my ugly take on this particular situation. The good thing is, like you said, there's an opportunity for some real Cinderella stories to yeah. race the one time. There's some people who might, there's some teams who could have won seven games all season long and knock somebody on, knock the top seed off, right? Ooh, like, that's like Heartland. That could have been Heartland Zombie Stars last season. That could have been Heartland, yeah. race the one as a 16 yes. seed or as a last seed, whatever, that's yeah. Yes, that could have been a, That's the good. The bad side of it is there's going to be a lot of bad basketball games in that tournament. Yes. Because, again, there's a possibility these guys can be Cinderella's, but is it likely? Not really. No, that's why it's a Cinderella. Maybe, you see what I'm saying? There's, there's maybe only one or two teams every year out of the bad teams who really have a chance to compete. Everybody else don't get the don't get the doors blown off of them. So that's the bad. That's the that's the good. That's the bad. The ugly side is for the coaches. Now, how are we going to gauge if you were a successful coach or not? Because we can't. You can no longer say, "Oh, my team made a tournament." Hell, everybody team making a tournament. So now. As 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 the ownership looking at it, as coach as media looking at it, win loss record. I I think I don't think they they matter as much because everybody there's no because there's no um there is no penalty for losing every game anymore. Because you're still yeah. going to be in the tournament. You still you still going to make the tournament. You could lose. You still make the tournament. There is no penalty win. for your team sucking all year long. You still making a turn. Oh, we're gonna lose the you of course you're gonna lose the tournament. Yeah, you lost in the regular season. So, you know, it's like that's the ugly side of it. Like for the coaches, uh the parameter of how great you were as a season kinda changes a little bit because now there's no cap. Because now you can say I made a tournament. Hell everybody made a tournament. You can't even say that anymore. And then, like you said, how are we gonna keep the game of the, the, the basketball game for the regular season? Very, very, very I, I think you know, now this is early on in the process. Maybe there's some tweaking that's going to be going to the roof as it stands right now. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I think there's some good sides to it, but I think there may be more potential negative aspects to it than positive aspects to it at this point. But it's early. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. They got something in the store, I'm sure. So before we get out of here, we know we got to end it with our team world's exit. of Heartland, the former Heartland star, Renzo Bryant, now on his way uh, somewhere else according to the engagement process. By the way, guys, the engagement, the engagement is still on this week. Remember, your I do moment is on Sunday. October 8th is when you say I do. Team, as you say that you do, uh, that you committed to. So, pick and roll uh, segment is when we pick, I pick a topic. Steve has no idea what I'm going to say. And Steve has to roll with it right there on the spot. So, here it is. We talk about basketball. We talk about sports. We always talk about sports. I want to know, Steve. Out of all sports that you're familiar with, out of all sports, who do you think which sports team has the worst fans for whatever reason you want to be? I think it's going to be a really regional answer. 
Which team you which team would you say has the worst fans? I got two teams in mind off the top of my head that, that I'm thinking about. And I think I'm going to have to go with Georgia football fans. Really? And, and I go, well, here's my thing. They, it's, it's different now because now they've won a couple, a couple natties. They, they've done that. But before they won the natties, when they were competing with Alabama and they were getting whooped in the natties, they were, they were just so, they were so on a high point. They were, they had the, they have the confidence of Alabama fans, but with the trophy case of an Ole Miss fan. That's, like, what they did. And so, like, I guess now they do have some titles to back it up a little bit, but they're still just so annoying. Like, no other fans, when you pass them on the street, are going to bark at you like a dog. They will bark at you. I remember because I was going to the Alabama-Georgia game, and I walked past some fans. I'm like, yeah, trash talking normal. Fans trash talking. People bark at you like a dog. They won't say words to you. They won't bark at you. And I, wow. to me, it's just a little bit. The other thing that was in my head was, was Patriots fans. But when I think about it, they're not that – they're really not that bad. They're just confident because they've had yeah, I can't, yeah, so yeah. long. So I can't really hate on them. But barking. So barking for me, I can't do it. So, so for me, I have a, I have a similar – yeah, I think it's a regional thing. I have a, a team that I'm thinking about and for a similar reason why you don't like Georgia fans. Cowboys fans. It's terrible. Well, yeah. They're like they're like the Georgia fans. They talk all this talk, and every year is their year, and they've been sucking every year. And they all oh, they don't got bad for them. I feel bad they for act them. like they act like they won the championship yesterday, Bruh, The last thing I won championship, yo, you were stealing your dad's ball sack. You weren't even born yeah. yet. So stop acting like you was around. You was being. You saw him as Smith. You didn't do none of that. You weren't even there. You weren't even born. They hadn't won. I, I, the, my, our team, I'm a, I'm a Houston guy, so, you know, I'm with the Texas, which, you know, we lost our first team that was the Tennessee. So our team is only about our current team, our expansion team is only maybe about 15 years old, something like that. We have more playoff wins than the Cowboys has, the Cowboys have in the last 20 years. We well, have more Stroud, in the Stroud last 20 now. years. We have more co- more playoff wins than the Cowboys do. This is crazy. The Cowboys are the most delusional guys. We're America's team. Man, that was back when America only had eight channels. You was not as a That was back when people was watching black and white TV. Stop it. They're the most delusional fans in the world, and I love it because I don't have an issue with the team. It's the fans that makes the team unbearable for me. Same way you feel about the Georgia Bulldogs. But that's my that's my two that's my two cents on it. Put in the in the thread. Put in the comments. Let's cut and discuss. What do you think about the new rules as far as tournament? And also, who has the worst fans in all the sports? And Cowboy fans, I know you're about to get in the thread and about to get on my goddamn name. We out. <laughs>